Hello, time travelers. Welcome to the Aging Journey podcast, an actual play podcast where we go back in time and play RP games themed around time and growing up in a variety of systems. I am your game master, Tanya, and this is The Red Bridge, a children's fantasy adventure using the kids on bike system inspired by works such as The Phantom Tollbooth, Alice in Wonderland, Jumanji, and The Wizard of Oz. We are playing Kids on Bikes, a tabletop role-playing game that allows players to explore a mysterious and supernatural world set in a small town during the 1980s and 90s. Our players embody characteristics called tropes and roll dice based on their brains, brawn, fight, flight, charm, and grit. The higher the stat, the better their skill. Each player has a top stat where they roll a d20 and a bottom stat where they roll a d4. In this game, dice explode, where if you roll the maximum on a die, you get to roll again, infinitum. Our players for this campaign were made from scratch and tropes are custom. There may be mature content depicted in our gameplay, but the players and I are using safety tools and all content warnings will be in the description below. You can listen to the audio of the podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, or the Aging Journey website, or watch it on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, join our Discord, or support us on Patreon. All links will be in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Well, I think that wraps up the spiel. Enjoy the journey. Yeah, there's something strange about Shady Creek. Um, So this is going to help us with our goals, like our group goals. The goal for this arc is to solve the mystery, essentially. So uh, either to solve the mystery or to allow the mystery to like hang in the air. But uh, essentially, when I put these little modules together in play role, they're going to show you what your goals can be and like what you guys can work towards. So then to right now, I want to look at your character sheets. Yeah, that's what we want to go through right now is making sure that everyone's character sheets are correct. So you are able to edit them. Um, if you have adversity tokens that you've been like <laughs> saving or if you remember what they are, you can hide your How many adversity <laughs> tokens did I have? Amazing that you say that. I have six adversity tokens wow. that I would love to redeem. <laughs> Um, and then your stats again, I just put all of these stats over from it's okay it it's only in notes. What are the variable buffs um so your variable buff is in your character sheet, and it's combat with a baseball bat. Oh, <laughs> so you get a plus three <laughs> well, where are the variable buffs for us for that okay did I pick wealthy or am I just naturally wealthy? Um, I don't think that's. I don't know why your character sheet is. Well, yeah. is, <laughs> I just did these character sheets. <laughs> but yeah, I, that's also a mistake. Um, no, it's perfect. Also, wealthy is like a. You can be wealthy, but it's also like a strength that you choose. So I think the only one out of all of you that's wealthy is. I think Jimmy. Well, Jimmy is like wealthy. Like Jimmy's like rich. <laughs> like, <laughs> Surprisingly, like rich. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think the rest of you are like in in different levels of like class, but Jimmy's like. Wait, Jimmy's rich. Yeah, yeah Jimmy's rich. J- hey, Jimmy's I, also. I, the... I thought, I thought, <laughs> the like, I thought about... Caleb was like rich in his own way, but I, but I, I thought Juke was like the rich one. I didn't know you I'm were the... rich internally laughing this whole time because jimmy's apparently the richest and he's also apparently like based off stats the smartest and yet just never plays that way <laughs> love it that's amazing the actual adult of the group <laughs> who will never grow up we're all adult kids in disguise and then the only question you all are kind of sharing with one another from your your long document is like what your freshman year is going to look like because you all are going into freshman year. Uh, so again, we've played a little bit already, so you can make some changes to that answer. So make edits on some of these things, including all the way up top, you have your fears and your motivation. Um, I think all of you wrote motivation, but I left it blank for most of you just in case you wanted to change it. So like, do you have a new like motivation in life or now, now that, you know, 
things have kind of changed for you and you've played the character a little bit. If I give you buffs, they're going to be permanent buffs because we talked about how the powered characters are almost going to be used as kind of like a leveling up system. So I will just add that buff to like your permanent stat. Um, speaking of that, Jimmy, you have a a permanent buff. I don't know if I added that. Jimmy getting superpowers right away. Let's go. Well, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I have in my, my notes here. Not get lost in the forest. I already got that. Oh damn! Um, mm-hmm. Wait, he gets two now. <laughs> no, he doesn't get two. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so uh, a reminder that there isn't leveling up in Kids on Bikes, but we are treating character uh, powers as something that will enhance your abilities and skills, and they'll kind of have different levels in terms of like how you can utilize and control your powers over time. However, they're embedded in the ways you play the game. So they are connected to your personal story development and like the evolution of your character. Um, so I've kind of written some stuff about how that's going to work. So I do want to talk to each of you about those. So I'm going to need everybody to hop into the Whisper channel other than normal. Oh. Hop in. (laughs) (laughs) My ascension begins. (laughs) Ah. Jimmy. Yes. You will, um, moving forward, have a permanent plus one to your grit rolls. Sick. When you go down to age buffs, it says adult grit. Just click on adult grit, and it'll add a plus one to your grit. Uh, How this is going to manifest for you is you're going to kind of see confusing glimpses of the future, like the immediate future. Uh, But you're only going to be able to do this by bringing inanimate objects to life. And they're going to give you cryptic messages. So you can kind of see how this is being manifested from your history. Because you you kind of already already done that. Um, In time, the the goal is for you to be able to identify, like, how you trigger this. And you can train yourself so that you can do it kind of on command. But that that will be your, your ability. Sorry. Okay. I was going through the backpack and adding like a couple stuff to the backpack slot. Should I add anything interesting in the backpack that would affect that ability? Well, you can. It'll just have to be something that you can bring to to school. Yeah, that because, makes sense. Because before your you guys' backpacks were just for like you know holding stuff over the summer, but now you'll have to mm-hmm. go. I mean, you guys aren't luckily well. Luckily and unluckily, this is the 90s. So uh, <laughs> you guys are living in suburbia, so there's not going to be like a metal detector or anything. But they they are still going to, you know, make sure that you're only bringing. That's why Caleb has a secret um, compartment. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can get together with, with Caleb once you learn that you have this ability. Like you have to, you'll have to, you like, you already know that this happened to you when you were a child. But yeah. Now you're going to have to like come to grips to it as like, as you're, as you're a teenager and growing into an adult, that this is like a real thing. Um, and ha- what that's going to look like for you. In the past, I was playing it like he didn't realize it was more of like mm-hmm. an imagination thing. And I think now that he's seeing, he, he's piecing the pieces together. And as it continues to happen, he'll realize more and more. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be fun um and probably (laughs) slightly nightmarish for a lot of people probably but yeah so that is you um do you have any any other questions or um anything you wanted to change or anything you wanted to like do you have a a new goal or a different goal for jimmy now that he's kind of lived the the last couple of days I think his motivation now more than ever is to keep the people who are close to him around. And uh, yeah, even I'm still deciding whether it's to keep them safe. Yes, he wants to keep his friends safe, but he's more and more afraid that people will leave him for whatever reason. And he Mm -hmm. doesn't want to lose more people. Mm -hmm. So that's his motivation right now. Okay. 
just keeping your friends safe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Keeping them safe, keep them close. Mm, like physically close? He doesn't want to feel like he's losing them. That's the, his mate. He's very afraid of losing people, and he doesn't want to feel like that they'll drift away or be taken away. Okay. Now, is that everybody? Um, everyone he cares about. Okay. So uh, Willow, possibly Caleb, Juke already has left him, so he doesn't feel the same way about Juke. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good mm-hmm. to know. I don't know. Did we brief you in on how me and um, M were playing the relationship between J- Jimmy and Juke? Uh, I believe you guys talked about that there would be some 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 uh, animosity due to some history, and I think it's in the chat. Um, so I I do remember it. I don't know if you guys have flushed it out even more. Mm. Well, we know we have the reasoning behind why Jimmy and Juke aren't happy with the, or at least Jimmy is very much not happy with Juke. Um, and the full on his, the way I've been playing, I think the way he's playing it is because he started hanging out with people. Uh, he basically started ditching uh, Willow and Jimmy very shortly after Jimmy's mom died. And so Jimmy mm-hmm. took that very personally. Gotcha. Okay. And so that's how I've been trying to play the relationship with M is Jimmy's very much sees him as someone who decided to leave and basically feels very betrayed and is not happy with Juke. Mm -hmm. And so the more things that like, especially going into this, the ways that Juke shows that he doesn't care is going to rub on Jimmy the wrong way because Jimmy's just going to see that more and more as like, bro, why don't you care? This is important. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Is is there a goal for you guys to reconcile? That's the hope. I do hope there will be reconciliation, but I want okay. I want to try and make it difficult because Jimmy mm-hmm. is a character who feels things very deeply and very heavily, and so and Juke is very much more laid back. So I want to see reconciliation between the two. Okay, sounds good. Which won't be easy. Yeah. All right. I don't intend to make it easy on them. Sounds like a a <laughs> friendship. <laughs> yeah, sounds exactly. Like a complicated friendship. All right. Hey, all good friendships start out of adversity. Exactly. All right. Uh, that is it for you, unless you have anything else. I think um, that's it. Okay. If you want to hop into the Whisper channel and ask Drake to come in. All right. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Apparently, I was summoned alongside the group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You were indeed summoned. You are welcome. All right, <laughs> let's get started. So, um, your ability of lifting much more than normal, it does have a a, a cap essentially so it's you can lift more than normal but like within reason so you're not going to be able to to flip over a double decker bus or anything Aww. yeah break, no. <laughs> break, break, break my dreams of becoming the Hulk. oh well um there is also something else that uh is connected to that but at the moment you haven't like seen how all of this is going to manifest for you so kind of how I was saying, it really depends on like what you do in the game of how these powers manifest. So that's why I asked everybody to kind of give me an idea of like how you would figure out that you have these abilities and then how you would like explain them to your friends. Um, okay. So for you, you are going to be able to, and it's not even really a powerful lift in terms of like your strength, like your strength necessarily hasn't changed. Um, it is a it is a psychic power because all of these powers are psychic. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're you're able to connect with something that allows you to lift up things that you normally wouldn't be able to. Is it more moving stuff with my mind, or is it actually like putting attribute to something? Let's say I want to pick up a a chair and I accidentally pick it up too well. <laughs> 
Maybe that wasn't um, the best analogy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know what? I think it's more of not even, not necessarily telekinesis, because that is really picking something up with, like, your mind. It is a physical ability, ability but I do think it's, like, triggered by, like, your, your, psych, your psychicness. So it'll, right. instead of, like, picking up, like, a, a couch with one hand, um, I think <laughs> it would make more sense that not only can you pick up, like, an axe with one hand, but you can throw it with precision. You know, like for some oh. reason, yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. So you've been you've been benching, so, so you can pick up this item, <laughs> but you can also wield the item, like you yeah. would be wielding a pen. And that's where it's like, okay, well, that's scarier. Um, <laughs> it's I different mean, to just pick up a couch, but it's it's more <laughs> difficult to pick up a couch and then hurl it at someone's head. True. True. Here's the thing. I completely understand this, and it's the only reference I can give it is, like, you roll a nat 20 on something. That's it. That's the limit of what you can do, and yeah, that's how an you have your success. Role. Exactly. You can do that, but the problem is that because this is, this is technically a physical strength, um, it would be on your fight or brawn. Right. Okay. Actually, Having it on fight is very good. I have a good stat on fight, so. Okay, but then that means that this only works with the the item that you you grab. So you wouldn't be able to utilize this strength and grapple someone. It's it's only for utilizing like a, an inanimate object. Okay, good to know. Okay, okay. Then that that sounds good for your fight. Um, I'll make a note of that. I feel very bad for the, for the person who this manifests towards. They're gonna go flying. More than ready to start a problem. <laughs> good to hear, good to hear. Um, now, I saw in your, in your notebook that you kind of have an idea of how you want this to manifest. Um, so just keep in mind that the goal is you're going to get to high school. So you're going to start high school. Um, and so kind of think of, of how you want your relationships to evolve and how you might utilize this ability with like some of the things you want to do. Relationships with who, if I may ask? Anybody. No, okay. Anybody. You're going to meet a whole bunch of new people because you guys are going to high school. You're going to meet, you know, seniors and and juniors and people you've never met before because you're all coming from middle school so it's going to be a bit of a different experience for everybody so this is one of the reasons why this is a good time to give you guys these abilities okay i will set under note are there any character changes or um not stat changes but like anything to your character sheet or background that you wanted to edit or change any new hmm. goals um any new anything that i don't know about right now that you want to update yeah uh one thing i think he would not mention to the group but definitely would put into his motivation is to try to be a better friend because what he realized with the whole heist thing was he's a bad influence he's a pretty <laughs> you don't, you <laughs> hey, don't, don't laugh it's the truth <laughs> He's a bit of a bad influence, and he can tell. He's dragging people into situations that get them hurt or get them caught, and he wants to refrain from that, and that could lead one of two ways. He could either, you know, try to be a better person, can't wait to see that happen, or he could try to, and I hate to say it, like, disinclude the group on his more shadier actions, mm -hmm. which he will try to hide from them. Well, that will be interesting because, like I said, you're going to be meeting a lot of new people in high school, and it's going to be a, a very different climate than all of you have been used to, particularly since you all were able to get closer over the summer. So it'll be interesting to see how you uh, balance all of these things. Ooh, does Caleb still do deals in high school? Uh, that is up to you. I mean, if you're trying to turn over a new leaf, it's going to be difficult because <laughs> high, high school is the place to do that stuff. <laughs> uh, 
is a loaded question, Tanya. Yeah. You know my answer. <laughs> He's still doing deals. He'll try to be less evil. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Caleb is not well, going through a villain arc for everyone listening. Caleb is not going through a villain arc. <laughs> I swear. Uh, we will see. <laughs> Funny. All right. I think that is about everything. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Go ahead and hop back into Whisper and let me get M, please. Absolutely. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? All right. Well, for your uh, special ability, you have the ability to burst energy from your hands, specifically when it is tied to an emotion. Um, and at the moment, I you almost so kind of how I was explaining to everyone, these abilities are tied to the way you play the game. And so you almost almost triggered it um, when you were protecting Helen. Um, and really made the decision to, you know, take the weapon, even though you were afraid. Um, and so you really had to step into that courageousness, uh, which was probably horribly nerve wracking and, and anxiety ridden. Yeah. But I wanted to know what emotion, because um, I saw your notes in terms of like how you how you're thinking this might manifest for you. What emotion would be like most triggering in this mm-hmm. at, at the very beginning before you even know that you even have this ability? So one of the, I guess like the main kind of motivator, I guess negative motivator for Juke is like a feeling that anyone who cares about him is going to abandon him eventually. Um, which is why he like doesn't really want to be close to anybody. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how to translate that into like an emotion. Um, but um, I, I mean, I guess that's fear, basically. But specifically, like fear of being alone. Hmm. Okay. So then, what would the trigger be for this burst of energy from your hand? Hmm. Um, because hmm. you were really like afraid at the the festival. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's not even necessarily like that. N- not necessarily abandonment, but l- loss. Like feeling like mm. you might lose someone. Yeah, that um, makes sense. I could see that like big time being a part with both. Um with both Helen and, and Jimmy as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay. Now, do you want a mechanical boost for this? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, so these are all, um, psychic abilities. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could see it more just being, like, narrative. Yeah, because you already have a... Well, it is technically also associated with your variable buff that you also haven't manifested yet, because your variable buff is playing music. Mm -hmm. So perhaps in time, once you've learned to harness this, you could be able to utilize, like, music, like you said, to do a burst of energy um, when you're, like, playing something. Right. But you already yeah. have that buff, so I think that works. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, okay. at this point, it feels like the power is something that would manifest more as, like, a complication than as something that's useful. Yeah. At this point, yeah, you would have to figure out the emotional, like, trigger, and mm-hmm. then you would have to figure out how to control that, and then you'd have to figure out how to uh, make it go through an instrument. Very right. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To me it's it's more fun as like a thing that gets in the way and causes problems than yeah. it is as like whatever else. Yeah. Um are there any uh changes or things that have that you wanna kind of like work on any goal any new goals for no. Juke? Okay. 
I had kind of like it's we were just talking about it in the other channel that Juke like is in this weird position of like not really having been affected by much of anything that happened. Like it's gone over his head a lot of the time, aside from like the crab apple thing. But like I feel like at this point he's kind of like weird stuff went down, but he's really where he was before. Yeah. And now when we did your flashback, you, you, you we kind of show that you had a good relationship with the middle school principal, mm -hmm. but you are now going to be going into high school. Um, how, what do you have any ideas or goals or is there anything going to be changing for Juke when he meets all of these new people? You're going to be, you know, entering into a brand new ecosystem as it will yeah so what i what i was kind of imagining for juke for the rest of the summer was that he would focus his attention on hanging out with his uh like low life skater friends um mm -hmm. like hanging around the park like trying to integrate himself in with these older kids who are already at high school so he has um like this social positioning going in interesting <laughs> do you think uh do you think that would go well or do you want to like roll for that or how do you want to see i think a roll makes it. sense but <laughs> okay. I, I mean we established a while ago that he already hangs out with these kids that, when he's skating yeah. in the park but yeah i think we could roll it yeah well it'll be interesting because it, 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 it we will have that kind of you know clicky scene at the beginning of every high school movie oh. <laughs> in the 90s and 2000s so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how um how duke if he decides to like split his time like you you have gotten a little closer to this group over the summer particularly caleb yeah. and then you guys are gonna maybe be pulled in different directions um as mm. high school is you know a little bit more clicky uh, than middle school. So, okay, good to know. I think some of it's going to ride on how, I mean, I hope we get to do the um, the open mic performance on how oh that goes. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, that was in the, that was, yeah, that was, hmm. I mean, I don't okay. think it has to be anything, just like a dice roll and like, was it good yeah. or was it bad? Okay. Okay, that's that's good for me to know. Um, yeah. yeah, I was gonna talk about like what you guys did for the rest of the summer. So yeah, uh, I mean, what you sure said last to, time to was we would do like a little montage or something, and I was hoping that would be that could be part of it. But it's yeah, like okay. literally just has to be a moment. Okay, gotcha. Okay, all right. But if it's that a disaster, good. Juke might like pull <laughs> pull away from Caleb a little I bit. I mean, yeah, that'll that'll. I'm hoping for either a really. Yeah, hoping for either a really bad roll or a really good roll. Because <laughs> okay. middle of the road's not that interesting. <laughs> you guys were meh. Like, people yeah. kind of clapped, but no one was really paying attention. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, interesting. That'll be fun. Okay, um, anything else? Nope, I'm cool. All right, uh, go ahead back into Whisper, and I will take Bix, please. You will. Okay, so Willow. For your ability, you are able to heal by touching. Um, like I've been telling everybody, this is manifesting based on what you've already done. Um, so you haven't really tried to heal anyone, but you have had the opportunity to maybe accidentally learn that you had this ability through some of your actions with some of the people around you. So at the moment, we don't, you don't know how this will manifest for you. Um, so what are, what are you thinking in terms of what this will look like when you kind of go back to the summer um, and maybe, and when you go back to high, or when you go to high school for the first time? Like, how it'll look visually and mentally? Like, does she already know it? Or just, like, whenever she eventually realizes that she does? Well, I mean, I think for this, you you could kind of be more like Jimmy, where 
he simply does things and it just happens to be like true. So like he, he talked to, uh, <laughs> you know, an inanimate object and he just happened to talk back. Um, so you could just look at someone and try to heal them. And even though you don't know really like if that will work, like based on your own knowledge and it'll actually happen, or you could try to figure out like, you know that um, Vidalia, at least you know the rumor that Vidalia's family are witches. Um, yeah. You also know, you, you're very, very in the world of Avaria. You're very much in the world of the game. You understand that magic exists. And you're pretty good at figuring it out. Because you've been trying to do it for years. So you could also, like, actively try to figure out how to heal people so you can do either it just depends on what you think your character would do yeah because if it's like something where she's so she's like trying to do it in avaria she'd probably like occasionally try to do it with like the with the residents in avaria like mm-hmm. trying to like help them if they ever got hurt and stuff and right. i i assume that the, there isn't like automatically medical type supplies like band-aids and stuff there so she like no. attempts to because she because she knows that there's magic. So she like attempts to like try and do like healing magic on them. But if that doesn't work, she just uses like whoever's around her or give Varia to help create it. Yeah, so that would be when you're in Avaria. But how would you manifest this in the real world? Now in the real world, if it's like where she's like still trying to do magic, it would most likely be with like Jimmy in the woods and they're like playing a game and stuff with like a bunch of dolls or something that they bring and so they're like like maybe like one of the toys got broke like jimmy sold she was like leg fell off so she was like here i'll, I'll magically heal his leg or something oh and they're just playing so, around oh okay interesting well that makes honestly so these are all psychic abilities they're they're all a part of that type of like because all of the abilities for kids and bikes are psychic abilities so that actually makes sense that you could heal, and I'm using like quotations, like heal or like fix things, but not necessarily with tools. You know, because you're not allowed to use tools. But you do yeah. like <laughs> you do like fixing and healing things. But perhaps you've never seen it as healing because it's a toy. But that's an interesting thing is that you could technically heal inanimate objects as well. And perhaps that's how it's kind of been starting for you in the real world. So you wouldn't really recognize that that's what you're doing. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Are there any um, updates or changes to like your backstory or the relationships that you have with um, any of the characters or anything or any new goals that Willow is going to have as she goes into high school? Not much. I mean, I kind of edited the goal a little bit, a little bit, but it's basically the same. Because okay. like I made the goal before we really knew everything, and so it just right. made we're like trying to regain those bonds with like other people. Yeah, and try to keep those strong as well. Now, as you go into high school, things are going to be quite different. You guys got luckily got a little closer in the summer. Um, And we're actually going to kind of do like a montage of what happens for the rest of the summer. Um, And I'm it's kind of assuming that you guys continue to get close. But in the but when you start going back to high school, obviously, there's going to be it's going to be a little bit more clicky. You're going to have, you know, different classes on some days. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to keep that like connection. Yeah, it's just where she's going to be trying to do it a lot. Like she's going to like try harder to do that try and like keep everyone together try and get more like outings with everyone because of her aunt hildy dying kind of just a reminder of that one lesson she learned before mm-hmm. okay so kind of just like hide in that sense i'm not wanting to lose anyone else yeah now you've had a secret goal this whole time to gather all of the uh pieces of the game right yeah how have you done (laughs) uh okay if i remember correctly because i got the train i know that yes i got the train 
You have the coins. I got the tokens now, too. Yes. You have the red bridge. Um, so you're missing the board, which is kind of important. Oh, right. The board. And the, re- and the rest of the bridges. Or did you find the... No, you didn't find the rest of the bridges. Um, so yeah, yeah, the other colored bridges. But I think other than those two... And there was a there was a D4 dice in the warehouse. But I don't think... I think either no one picked it up or Caleb picked it up and gave it to Grouper. I can't remember. But that's a regular D4 dice. You can get that anywhere. You can get that from a game store. So that's not really important. So it's just those two things. The the board and the um and the bridges. But as soon as you have those two things, you have all the pieces of the game and you are technically able to start the game again. Now, I I think we talked a little bit about uh, originally why you were wanting to get all the thing, all the pieces of the game and play the game again, because it was, I think you said it was a way for you guys to reconnect, right? Yeah. It's like, that's like, there, there's like a couple reasons, but that's one of the main ones is a way for everyone to reconnect because that's kind of like how they all first met. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it's just like bringing back those memories may help everyone be able to reconnect and see how, what they saw in each other whenever everyone first met. Exactly. All right. Anything else? Other than that, the other reason that she's also trying to find the game is because it is quite literally an escape from reality. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. you know, it's like she has the Clem Woods, but not all the time is it like a place where she can truly escape from the problems and, and things that she faces in reality. Well, on Avaria, she can. She can make what she needs. She can talk to creatures that she likes and have become friends with as a way to just escape and forget everything in the real real world. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, If there's nothing else, uh, I am going to have everybody come back. I'll have them come back into the recording channel. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. All right. So we had some some wonderful conversations, um, discuss some ideas of how we're all going to go forward as your characters. And so now I want to give kind of a review of what everyone knows at this point. Like this is focused on the person, but you all also do know this. Willow, you found um, you found something hidden between the seats of the Eldera when you guys went to uh, the warehouse. Um, you've also have pieces of the um, the game, the Red Bridge, hidden somewhere in your home. Um, you ate a green apple at the orchard. Uh, you also kind of chucked a couple of apples into the pit at the orchard when you guys did your heist. Uh, you also had an interesting dream where it turned out not to really be a dream um, where you went to Clementine Park and you met Mr. Juan, who's a custodian. Um, at the park, you also saw and were able to pet an unnamed black bunny. And then recently, you also saw your Aunt Hildy uh, get a pretty serious injury at the <laughs> festival. Mm-hmm. Injury. Pretty serious, pretty serious injury. <laughs> I don't like that you're not taking this seriously. <laughs> also, didn't I, uh, didn't I name the rabbit? Did you? I, I thought I thought I named the rabbit like midnight or something. I believe you did name the rabbit. That doesn't mean that's the rabbit's name, but you did name the <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> well, that's the rabbit's name though, because they named. <laughs> The rabbit's name was Twix. <laughs> yeah. So that's that was Willow. <laughs> Jimmy, you found a necklace that is actually a talisman um, in the warehouse. You have a memory of a shadow speaking to Mrs. Balo, who's a night guard at the orchard, who used to be a night guard at the orchard. You don't know if she still is. You also have a memory of a green of a strange green apple that looked very similar to the green apples you saw at the festival. Um, you did go searching for the black bunny after Willow told you about it, but you never found it. 
uh, you tried to find your family at the festival, but you never saw them um, after you guys kind of went your separate ways. Uh, you'd have connected that the green apples um, have something to do with the ability to talk to your action figures when you were a child. And you've also learned that Willow's dream and when she went to the park um, was probably like real. So it wasn't an actual dream. Caleb, you were given an obsidian puzzle box by Mr. Willock. Um, this is a couple years ago. Uh, then you found a similar puzzle box in the warehouse and you gave it to Juke. Uh, and then you recently figured out how to open the puzzle box. Right. Well, uh, open quotations as it's now not a box, but simply a disc. Yeah, technically opened. Um, Juke, um, Helen uh, experienced, didn't really experience a lot of the horrors. Um, you were able to keep her eyes away from a lot of the crazy stuff that was happening at the festival, and you hid her away pretty quickly. Um, so for her recollection, she mostly remembers um, eating snacks in the basement of the library. <laughs> 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 and like going home super late. <clears throat> Probably all, all like all the fun stuff that we did when we were wandering. Exa- off, exactly. Right? Yeah. She was like, I had a great day. I don't know what you guys are talking mm-hmm. about. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you also have an antique but beautifully ornate Colt pistol, um, of which you remember that you didn't have to shoot. You just had to point in the direction of a threat. Um, and for some reason, they stayed away. And then you all know that there is a secret base, uh, a basement, or like a, a secret room in the basement of the library. You also know that Badalia Shady is some kind of like protector. Uh, she seems to know a lot about Shady Creek and what's happening here. Um, Mr. Willock is some kind of maybe mystic uh, wizard, something. You, you're not sure, but he's also Caleb strange. 100% believes that. Yeah, definitely wizard. (laughs) Uh, The orchard is producing dangerous crab apples. That's kind of what you guys kind of glean. Uh, You also know that there's a cult known as the Apple Nuns, um, and they are from the Madonna sect, uh, who used to run the orchard back in the 1920s. Um, Willow and Jimmy's treehouse in Clem Woods was demolished. No, my stuff. (laughs) <laughs> and all of your stuff was thrown away. And then Caleb and Juke have been having um, dreams of playing the game uh, when they were children, uh, but they're refusing to talk about it. <laughs> so <laughs> that essentially And instead has... chose to do crime. <laughs> Absolutely. As you do. As you do. <laughs> okay. Did Willow and Jimmy start rebuilding? Uh, we won't know that. So this is so that okay. was essentially kind of like our uh, almost like a little mini session zero, just to kind of get us back into the groove, get everyone remembering exactly what we were doing, and then also um, updating our character sheets and everything. So now that that's done, we can finally get back into gameplay. Thank you all for listening. We hope you are enjoying the campaign. Don't forget that you can listen to the podcast on the Aging Journey podcast website, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Links will be in the description below. Don't forget to follow or subscribe. You can also support the podcast on Patreon or join our Discord. Enjoy the journey.